Hi Game Programmer! In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to get user input from the keyboard and gamepad and use that input to control the mood light we made in the previous lesson. Along the way, you'll learn a bit more about classes, objects, and methods. We'll even learn how to control the vibration of the controller. Speaking of the controller, let me plug in my controller here And what you don't know about this mood light you're watching right now is that it's the manual mood light. And so with my controller, I can control the amount of blue, green, and red that goes into the mood light. I can even set the controller to vibrate if any of the colors get too close to 255. All right, well, let's begin coding. Let's open up the mood light from the previous lesson, the one in which the color changed on its own. Here I can find that under recent projects. And let's examine one of the conditional statements, particularly this one. If red counting up, red intensity plus plus. What we want to do in this tutorial is that we want to change the condition from red counting up to if the red B button on the gamepad is pressed, or if the R key on the keyboard is pressed, red intensity plus plus. To do that, we're going to need a gamepad. So let me plug in my gamepad here. And with Windows 7 or Windows Vista, the gamepad is automatically registered. If you have Windows XP, you're going to have to download a driver. The Xbox and XNA provide support for up to four gamepads connected at the same time. You know which player you are by the light that shows up. So in this case, around the Xbox symbol here, there are four lights. And here you see that I am the top left quadrant, meaning I am player one. So what if I don't have a wired controller and all I have is wireless controllers? Well, you can purchase a separate wireless gaming receiver and plug that in. And then your PC will be able to register that you have a gamepad set up. Well, what's great about XNA as well is that you can plug in a steering wheel, dance pad, or even a guitar into your Xbox or your PC, and all of them are controlled with the same code, the gamepad class. How cool is that? Let's type up some code. Go to the top of the update method, and here you will see a statement that already controls when the game exits. Gamepad.getState playerindex.1.buttons.back equals buttonState.pressed. What's going on here is that we're getting the state of the playerindex.1 gamepad, which happens to be the first player, and we're specifically specifically looking at a button, the back button, and seeing if it is equal to button state dot pressed. We're going to type up some code similar to this. Gamepad state pad one which is an identifier for the first player controller equals gamepad dot get state and we need to specify player index dot one and here we have a statement that represents the state of a gamepad. Remember that a class contains data and methods. 
There is a class called Gamepad State that represents the status of a gamepad. What buttons are pressed, what direction the analog sticks are pointing in, and how far the triggers are depressed. We are setting up an object reference of the Gamepad State class and naming it with the identifier Pad1. To get a Gamepad State, you need to ask the Gamepad class by using a method called GetState. The only thing GetState needs to know is which controller to look at since there are four options. We specify this with a specific player index, in this case player index.1, which serves as a parameter to the getState method. Now that we have the state of the controller, we can check to see if the appropriate button is pressed. Go ahead and go to the red counting up condition and instead of red counting up, type in pad one dot buttons dot b and let's see if it's equal to button state dot pressed. What's going on here is if the B button is pressed, we'll increase the red intensity. So we won't need this code anymore. And we won't need this code anymore because we are controlling the mood light color ourselves. Go ahead and do the same thing or the similar thing with green intensity and blue intensity. So for green counting up, instead of the B button, we're actually going to use the A button because the A button is green. So we're trying to you know, match it up. And for blue, the corresponding button is X. Once again, we don't need the rest of the code. So we'll just delete that because we are in control now. The user is in control. Now there's one last button on the Xbox controller, the yellow button. And that yellow button is signified by Y. But we don't really have a yellow color component. So what we'll do here is we'll check the yellow button, the Y button, and we will increase both red and green at the same time. Because red and green together change the yellow intensity. So what we did here is we put the red and green intensity increments within a block that's delimited by braces. You use braces to create a block of code because we want both things to happen when the Y button is pressed. Pause the video and add this code. Well, what about the keyboard? Most of us don't have Xbox 360 controllers lying around, so most of us are going to have to code using the keyboard. Previously, I told you that we could plug in peripherals normally used with the Xbox into a PC, like a gamepad controller or a guitar. But did you know you could also plug a keyboard into an Xbox? Now we're going to learn how to use the keyboard to control our manual mood light. Let's go to the code. And below all the gamepad instructions, let's type our keyboard instructions. Let's start with keyboard state and we'll call the reference keyboard that's a nice name and that's going to be equal to keyboard dot get state here we call the get state method from the keyboard class we don't need to specify which keyboard since we're only allowed to have one the keyboard state class is similar to the gamepad state in that it represents the status of its respective input device. The difference is that a keyboard state object has methods that will determine whether a key is down for you rather, rather than you having to compare it to a key state, like the gamepad state class has to compare its values to a button state. So let's type up an if statement, if 
keyboard dot is key down keys dot r and here you see IntelliSense doing its job again trying to pick um, trying to help me pick from various options on the keyboard oops I meant keys dot r and if the R key is down, I want to increase the red intensity. So here we use the method is key down and give it a parameter to specify which key we want to check. If you're wondering what keys you can use on the keyboard, know that you can always use IntelliSense to help you. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for green, blue, and even yellow. Remember yellow went both red and green to increase. And voila! Our gamepad code and our keyboard code. Well, what about stopping the game using the keyboard? Right now, we can stop the game using a gamepad. Let's also stop the game using a keyboard. Right here, type up if keyboard dot is key down keys dot and let's use the escape key. this dot exit pause the video and add this code now our code can be controlled by the gamepad and the keyboard but isn't this code a little redundant can't we use a logical operator in these if statements to make them compound conditions? Take a look. Both the R key and the B button cause the red intensity to go up. Let's combine the two. First, cut that, paste the keyboard state, keyboard equals keyboard dot get state line right up behind, below the gamepad state line and right here if pad1.buttons.b is equal to button state dot press or using the or logical operator let's copy this or the keyboard dot is key down keys dot well that's escape actually but I wanted keys dot r so in this case If the B button's press or the R key is down, red intensity plus plus. There we go. Take this code, and paste that right there, and let's do the same thing with the rest of this code here. And now you can go ahead and delete that. And doesn't that look a lot nicer? Using that logical OR operator. Very nice. Pause the video and add this code. Now let's talk about controller vibration. What we want to do is we want the controller to vibrate when any of the red, green, or blue intensity values go um, too high. So let's say too high is anything above 220. So go to your code and right below everything else let's type up if the red intensity is greater than 220 and this is the, the vibration code here. We want the gamepad dot set vibration method to happen and here the set vibration method takes in three parameters 
first the player index, in this case player index.1. And the second parameter is a number between 0 and 1.0 that controls the speed at which the left motor spins. So let's set that at 0 for now, meaning no spinning at all. And then the second, the, the last number is for the right motor, and that's the high frequency motor, as you can see by IntelliSense here. Nice IntelliSense, I love it. And uh, that's going to be one, so full blast, and a semicolon. There we go. Let's go ahead and see how this works. And so I'm going to press the red value. And at some point, I think you can hear that vibration. And so I'm going to go ahead and let the red cycle over. And wait a second, it's still vibrating. Hmm, this isn't good. We're going to have to fix that. We're going to have to set up an else condition. So if the red intensity is greater than 220, we'll vibrate the right motor. Else, meaning else if the red intensity is not greater than 220, we're actually going to have to turn off the vibration. You see what happens with vibration is that once we turn it on, it stays on until you actually turn it off. So we're going to have to call the set vibration method here again and set the right motor at zero. So in this case, what happens is if we increase the red intensity above 220, it's going to vibrate the motor. But as soon as it goes below 220, meaning it cycles back over to zero, the vibration turns off. We need to do the same thing for uh, green and blue as well. So let's use that logical operator called the OR operator again. And let's set it up for green intensity greater than 220 or blue intensity greater than 220. And there we go. This code should control whether the gamepad controls, I mean, uh, vibrates or not. And uh, that's basically based on the um, values of the red, green, and blue intensity values. Pause the video and add this code. By now you should have completed the coding of the manual mood light. In the next two sections, we'll explore some cool additions to your code and take a look at the lab for this lesson. Alright, so we know how to use the gamepad, the keyboard, and we even know how to control the vibration of the motors in the gamepad. This will be a great time to experiment on your own. You can do multiple things. One thing that our code needs is the ability to actually decrease the red, green, and blue intensities as well. So we can go up. What about going down? So you can do that. You can set the vibration to occur when the values are too low as well as too high. So try something like that. Play around with your code and enjoy it. The next thing we're going to get to is a description of the lab. Let's talk about the color nerve lab. In this lab, you will add to the manual mood light code to create color nerve, a multiplayer game of daring and challenge in which players see how close they can get to a certain color value without going over. The idea here is that you're going to play with one, two, or even three different players. Actually, you could probably play with 17 if you wanted to. And you're going to pass the controller around. The rule is that every single person has to press at least one button. You can press it down for just one second, half a second, one press, or even five seconds if you wanted to. Whoever changes any of the color components to a value of 255 loses, and the gamepad will vibrate, and the screen will turn black, signaling that the player is out. Whoever thought you could turn a mood light into a game?